Science Journal for Kids and Teens presents How Does Sunscreen Make Corals Sick? Adapted from the original peer-reviewed paper in the journal Science, published on May 5, 2022. Research conducted by George Vukovic, William Mitch, John Pringle, and others from the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Stanford University. See the full list of authors and their affiliations in the accompanying PDF. Read by Miranda Wilson. Abstract. Picture yourself diving into a tropical ocean. The sun is bright and the water is clear and warm. What do you see? Colorful fish, playful dolphins, waving seaweed, Maybe you even see something that looks like a beautiful underwater garden, a coral reef. Coral reefs are important habitats for a huge diversity of animals. But sadly, warming oceans and pollution threaten most coral reefs. An example of this threat is actually sunscreen. Oxybenzone is a chemical found in many sunscreens that can harm corals and other animals. But scientists didn't know exactly how oxybenzone harmed corals. We set up an experiment to find out how corals and sea anemones, which are closely related to corals, reacted to oxybenzone in the water. Introduction. Coral reefs are home to many different species of animals and microorganisms. Nearly one in four ocean species lives in a coral reef. Coral reefs are built up by the exoskeletons of thousands of tiny animals called coral polyps. Sea anemones are also polyps. Often, polyps live together with symbiotic algae. The algae help the polyps get nutrients and energy. Unfortunately, climate change and pollution are dangerous to coral reefs. But there are other threats to them too, like sunscreen. Many coral reefs are in places where we like to go swimming, and when we go swimming, it's important to wear sunscreen. But some sunscreens contain a chemical called oxybenzone. Oxybenzone may not be very toxic or harmful to humans, but scientists noticed that some animals were getting sick in water with high levels of oxybenzone. Because of this, Hawaii banned sunscreens with oxybenzone in 2018. There are lots of other chemicals that sunscreen makers can use. But what if the replacements for oxybenzone are as bad or even worse for corals? To keep this from happening, we need to know what it is about oxybenzone that makes it harmful to ocean life. Scientists already knew that oxybenzone can interfere with or mess with hormones in some animals. So why is oxybenzone especially harmful to corals? Coral reefs are critically important habitats, home to thousands of different species of animals and microorganisms. In the photo, you can see numerous corals surrounding a yellow tang on the top and a clownfish on the bottom. Methods. We used Aptasia sea anemones for most of our experiments for two reasons. They are closely related to corals and are much easier to experiment with in the lab. Like coral polyps, Aptasia polyps usually carry symbiotic algae. We also looked at a mushroom coral called Discosoma. 1. We set up saltwater tanks with artificial sunlight. This included ultraviolet light, or UV. The lamp was on a timer to follow the 24-hour cycle of night and day. Two. We added oxybenzone to most of the tanks. These were the experimental tanks. We did not treat some of the tanks with oxybenzone. These were our controls. 3. Over some of the experimental tanks, we put an extra piece of plastic that blocked the UV light. Here in Figure 1, you can see our experimental setup showing one tank with a UV filter on the left and one tank without it on the right. In each image, you can see a tank filled with seawater containing an anemone. Lamps with artificial sunlight hang above the tanks and shine in the water. The tank on the left has a filter that blocks the UV light. 
Four, we did separate experiments with the Aptasia with their symbiotic algae and then without their symbiotic algae. We also did experiments with the Discosoma corals. And five, we measured the concentrations of oxybenzone metabolites in the algae and in the anemone polyps. Metabolism is the process where a living thing breaks down some molecules and forms new ones. Metabolites are the molecules made during metabolism. Results. Here's what we discovered from our experiments. One, when we didn't block the UV light, none of the anemones survived with oxybenzone in the water. Two, when we blocked the UV light, almost all the anemones survived with oxybenzone in the water. Three, anemone and coral polyps that still had their symbiotic algae survived longer than the anemones that were missing their algae. And four, we found more oxybenzone metabolites in the algae than in the polyps. The polyps that were missing their algae had higher amounts of oxybenzone metabolites in their bodies. Figure two shows the percentages of anemones that survived in water with oxybenzone from the start of the experiment. On the x-axis, you can see the time in days from zero to 20 days. On the y-axis, you can see the percentage of anemones that survived. The black line represents anemones exposed to no UV light. The orange line represents anemones with symbiotic algae exposed to UV light. And the purple line represents anemones without symbiotic algae also exposed to UV light. Looking at the graph, how do the symbiotic algae affect the survival of anemones? Discussion. We were surprised that UV light was so important. After all, oxybenzone is designed to protect us against the harmful effects of this light. So what could be happening? Why were the anemones so sensitive to the combination of UV light and oxybenzone? Our experiments show a possible answer. We found that the anemones and corals absorbed the oxybenzone from the seawater and transformed it into new chemicals or metabolites. This is not unusual, but in this case, the new molecules formed by the anemones and corals were phototoxic. This means these molecules are harmless on their own, but they form dangerous new chemical species under UV light. We also found that in healthy anemones and corals, the algae store the phototoxic metabolites. This helps protect the polyps but we know that stressed out corals get rid of their symbiotic algae. This is called bleaching. Coral bleaching is happening more often than it used to because of higher sea temperatures due to climate change. Without their symbiotic algae to protect them, bleached corals are especially vulnerable to the phototoxic metabolites. Conclusion. It's important to protect your skin when you go to the beach. Sunscreens help protect our skin from harmful UV light, but clearly some kinds of sunscreen can be harmful to undersea life. Sunscreen makers must keep looking for different recipes so that their products are safe for both people and ocean life. You can help keep the environment healthy by learning the rules for places you visit, and you can always look for ways to leave a place better off than you found it. Thank you for listening to this recording. Visit our website, sciencejournalforkids.org, for more free science teaching resources.